So what happens? And I'm going to explain this with dairy. It's the same principle. What is that principle? The fact is, dairy has over 100 antigens. When you drink dairy, the body responds against the dairy, but gets a little confused. It also makes antibodies against the beta cells of the pancreas. Vaccines, same thing. Many, many antigens in vaccines. And when you get vaccinated, you, you stimulate antibodies. That's the concept. But we also tend to stimulate antibodies against the beta cells of the pancreas. Same principle. So where that takes us is that kids, particularly if they get cow's milk, not mother's milk, cow's milk, particularly within the first three months, they will have somewhere between roughly, depending on the data with Finland and, and other Chile and other places, uh, 11 to 13 times more rate of uh, type 1 diabetes. Finland, which drinks the most milk, has the highest rate of type 1 diabetes. They're just way up there, about 600% more than other places. But this is true wherever that is happening. So, and we see the, the diabetes studies in Finland and also in New Zealand showing uh, up to 147% increase in type 1 diabetes. But I'm going to tell you the average is around 60%. All the studies put together. So it's, uh, so, but it's the same principle. Antigens create antibodies. Body cross-reacts, makes antibodies against the beta cells of the pancreas. That's the mechanism of how that works. And that's why uh, American Pediatric Association, as I point out in my book, There's a Cure, Diabetes, is recommending kids not have uh, dairy from cows until at least two years. So just kind of keep in mind all that's going on. Uh, agrochemicals are very important. I'm, I'm putting them almost as a, a third leading cause because they destroy the beta cells of the pancreas like heavy metals, particularly mercury, but mer lead, mercury, cadmium, which are higher again in the animal world, and arsenic. Cigarettes increase it by about 20%. Low fiber is a big player, and that you get a lot with the, the, the meat, fish, and chicken. Stress can do it, lack of exercise. People exercise regularly, just a half hour, not heavy exercise, have about 58% less diabetes. So exercise plays a role. It's not the big player, but it's a player, okay? Um, we have excitotoxins, soy and wheat. They all increase the rates of diabetes significantly. Excitotoxins are your aspartame and things like that, MSG. Literally, aspartame and MSG destroy and disrupt the hypothalamic function, which controls all the hormonal balance. That's a problem. MSG also stimulates, there's glutamine receptor sites in the beta cells that stimulates insulin production uh, uh, strongly. So when they destroy the beta cell, uh, that and also the hypothalamic function, you get some pretty significant metabolic imbalances. So MSG and aspartame are a problem. Gets back to the soft drinks. The research, oh well, don't, don't put sugar in, put you know, your synthetic... Uh, sweeteners, but they're actually worse. They're like 15, depending on the study, 15 to 60 percent greater rates of diabetes for the dietetic because they're actually disrupting beta cell functioning as well as uh, brain functioning. So you stay away from those. I mentioned EMFs. It's, most people haven't heard of it, but it's, a, it's a definitely a problem that I see. Uh, and people are getting sensitive EMFs and their blood sugars go up and really go into diabetic uh, uh, zones. Sleep is a big player. Research, again, in Australia kind of highlights that. But in my observations, if people uh, miss getting at least six hours sleep for a few days in a row, their fasting blood sugars in the morning will be maybe up to 20 points higher. It's definitely a problem. Sleep is a much bigger problem than people understand. And it's, it's an endemic problem around the world. People are just working too hard, not getting enough sleep. And it is associated. Radiation is another player. Um, the research on radiation suggests 
like uh, after uh, Chernobyl and, and, and Bohemians, a 200% increase in type 1 and type 2 di diabetes over 20 to 30 years. After Fukushima, kids under 12, 60% of the kids under 12 have type 2 diabetes. 60%. That's, that's way off the deep end. Now, we do have a, a serious increase in children with type 2 diabetes. It used to be about 4%. Now it's more than 25%. There's more going on than meets the eye. I'll just give you a hint there because it's, uh, we don't know that much about it. But why, why are six-month-old kids getting fat? Well, is it because they're overeating? Not really. The feeling is it's environmental toxicity. That the environmental toxicity is poisoning their pancreases and also disrupting their whole uh, metabolism. So that's why I think we're getting uh, an increased rate in type 2 diabetes in even six months old because of this reason. Yes, there's no question about it. Kids are, rates of diabetes are pretty big. And I think New York, half the kids are overweight and about third are obese in grammar school. That's not good for diabetes. But what I'm saying is there, there's more to it than just overeating. The environmental toxins are playing a role. We need to consider that in the bigger picture. That's what I want you to understand. And that radiation is a thing. Psychotropic drugs, and I won't go into it in detail, definitely increase the rate of uh, type 2 diabetes. They damage certain the diabetes um, hormonal balance and depression. Uh, people with uh, severe depression within one year, 62, depending on the study, 62 to 82 percent will develop diabetes. If they have one serious depressive episode. And people with type 2 diabetes have three to four times more depression. It's a little circular. That's kind of an overview. Um, I'm going to focus more about the sugar and the animal fat and the animal protein um, in the bigger picture. I wanted you to see this is a multifactorial thing. There isn't one cause. There are primary causes and there are secondary causes as we look at the big picture. So these are a lot of references backing what I'm saying. You can